vein and you're not allowing your body to rest. Um, yes, so next, eight is speech. So I had delayed speech, but on the other hand, um, it was like something, like a flip switched or something, because I don't know if my parents are lying to me about this or what, but apparently I knew the Lord's Prayer word for word at like between age one and two, and then suddenly, like even to this day, I couldn't tell you what it is, but I remember being at this age where it was kind of like that movie Baby Geniuses, where you're like a genius and then suddenly it's like someone pulls out the plug and you kind of forget that portion of your life or something but that honestly happened to me like somehow I knew the Lord's prayer word for word before bed every night and then suddenly I just couldn't remember so that tends to be something autistic um the autistic community talks about is like regression in your skills kind of early on and another thing is when I was at a certain age, I would constantly ask questions to learn. And I was told by my um, abuser, one of my abusers, over and over again, wow, you ask a lot of questions. So eventually I just felt so insecure that I stopped asking questions, which, is, which in some ways is like I stopped learning. And I think I carried that into school as well, because I feel like I just stopped asking questions in life. And that's a very, you know, hurtful, harmful thing. Kids should be able to ask questions. And another thing with my speech is, um, even now to this day, but especially more before, I would do say things like um, toothbrush when I'm talking about a pencil. Like, I don't know, just like it just spit. I can it spits out of my mouth and I just can't control it. Like, it's just a really strange thing. I don't know why, but that happens often where I just say the wrong thing, even though I'm thinking of the right thing. Um, I definitely would have benefited from speech therapy at a young age. Like, although, I don't know, I don't hear myself when I'm talking. Like, I don't... Until I watch these videos, I don't see how much I stutter, stammer, whatever it is. I don't know because I've never been officially diagnosed with any verbal problems, but I just know that I do. I'm feeling a lot more mental clarity and energy this week because I've started to eliminate my food sensitivities. But some of the time in some of my videos, I'm stammering and stumbling. But yes, early intervention, seeing a speech therapist... That just wasn't going to be something that was an option for me as someone in an environment where my basic needs weren't being met. So things beyond that were def definitely not going to be. Nine is facial recognition and names. I used to be pretty good with that. Like I, there was a time like late into high school where I just knew every single person's like first and last name and I was just sh surprised when a friend of mine in the same grade said she didn't know everyone's name and a lot of people didn't tend to know everyone's name. They kind of just knew like their friends and classmates and stuff but I seemed to know everyone's name in the whole school practically first and last name. So that was something I was good at before but now... I'm really bad with like names and I'm really bad with like facial recognition too. Like people recognize me right away or, and so that's interesting because, you know, there is regression that comes, uh, autistic women can actually regress in their communication with age, which is kind of alarming. As I said, I wasn't going to, um, I said I wasn't going to elaborate on anything. And here I am with, um, I'm only on point nine of 15. So this might have to be several parts. Um, 10 collections. So my special interest was mostly collections. I feel like I definitely 
had different obsessions throughout, throughout, throughout. But when doctors used to ask me that as I was, you know, discussing depression or things at times in my life, um, they would always ask me about special interests and I immediately would say no because I didn't know what that was even about or what that was linked to and I had really low self-esteem so in my head like I didn't have the knowledge understanding or the skills that a lot of people seem to have who weren't autistic but it turns out my special interest was collections so I had movie stubs I collected from every movie buttons pins cds dvds and clothing and shoes and candles and nail polish just anything becomes kind of a collection in excess like things i'll almost never use like books i definitely get more of my information on my phone and i don't read as much as, as i should it would be nice to get back into reading and get away from the screen every now and then but it just seems like everything becomes a collection so now that i'm living in a travel trailer where i don't have I'm seeing a seal back down there. Aw. <laughs> anyway, um, now that I'm living in a place that's so small, I was kind of forced to get rid of some of my collections, which wasn't the worst thing in the world because they were literally just sitting in bags, like have, serving no purpose. So now I pretty much just have a few collections and I'm trying my best not to grow them. <laughs> so going to the store and just window shopping is like one of my things that I'm doing lately, like when I make my shorts and it's because it just feels good to like observe things and not buy. <laughs> I have to save money and I don't have the space for it and I don't have the money. Next 11, comorbid conditions. So autistic people tend, and children tend to also, not always, but ADHD, depression, anxiety, gut health issues, OCD. With OCD, um, I create a lot of rituals for myself and like thinking and rules and things like that. Like I'd have to, I'd have to, um, like two steps between each block like of pavement on the sidewalk and or I'd have to get across the street before the light turned to the like flashing hand symbol and stuff like that and I used to hate body hair when I was like a kid going through puberty I shaved like my arms and legs and everything armpits I just hated the feeling of having like body hair um I had like literally I don't know how long um probably like a 15 year problem where if I'm like in class getting lectures and stuff or just any time like what I was doing with my hands is like picking split ends like I couldn't leave my hair alone so thankfully in my late 20s when I opened oh, like maybe a bit earlier than that when I was um a server my hair was up all the time and I couldn't like around that time it actually was helpful in other ways not just socially but because I was constantly hand washing um it kind of helped get rid of some of my bad habits and OCDs like that because, you know, it takes however many days to um, begin a habit. It takes probably just as many or more to end a habit. So, uh, thankfully, and then, you know, when I had my daycare, I wasn't sitting there doing that because I was constantly observing the safety and well-being of the kids or interacting with them or taking care of their needs and stuff and washing my hands constantly. So that was something that definitely ended, like probably around age 26, 27. And with comorbid conditions, a lot of autistic people tend to have EDS or even fibromyalgia. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but I um, am starting to believe that I have EDS. I haven't really looked into it more, but at a young age, like I've had like loose skin and I've talked about this before, but um, just things like 
uh, my knees hyperextend, like things like that. And the soft skin, and there's a bunch.